just so everyone knows, the, the, the goal is to work on a 100% UN restricted uh, tutorial targeted specifically to beginners and intermediate players. Um, so we talked about it yesterday with Drake. Um, we're, we're trying to, 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 to get a tutorial running that's not too... Uh, too lengthy. Uh, honestly, if I think we, if we went skip by skip, trick by trick, we the tutorial would be it'd hundreds be, of hours. It'd be, it'd be Thirty hours easily. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at least. I mean, NMG was. I did a very, very, uh, very broad NMG tutorial, which yeah. took, I don't know, seven, eight, nine hours. So this is uh, probably this would probably be worse. But <clears throat> we're trying to get um, anyone who wants to start this category uh, on the right track. Um, so we're starting with an episode zero. Uh, Drake was kind enough to volunteer to, to work on it. Um, we should probably so, introduce uh, ourselves, actually. Since well, this will be episode zero. <clears throat> that is a good point. I'm Lawyer Budo. I, 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 I'm by essential participation in the Doom Eternal uh, community. Speedrunning com community is that I'm a, I'm a mod. I don't really speedrun the game. Uh, I finished it. I have a lot of playtime, and I finished it on UN and on a variety uh, of uh, settings, <clears throat> especially no HUD, and I usually play without a HUD, but I'm nowhere as good as um, as the runners, and I am nowhere as knowledgeable as uh, Drake uh, about the game. Um, but I, I, I do know a bit, and uh, I thought it would be fun to have this like community ev event with uh, runners and routers, uh, Drake being both, because he is both a runner and a router. Yeah. He started running NMG, which is really cool. And Ace, actually. I started Ace yesterday. Ah, it's so cool. I, I'm so sad Ace isn't more of a category, honestly. Mostly it's... just because Hundo is taking the taking the spotlight right now. But Yeah. And Bowser, Bowser's, Bowser, who invented the category, is, um, is playing other categories right now. He wants to get a world record, I think, in, um, in Hundo on, uh, on tag first. But anyway, oh, so, okay. yeah, uh, so, so anyway, yeah, like, like, like Laurie said, I'm a, I'm a speedrunner and router and strat finder for this game. Um, Today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going over the rules of the category. We're going to give you some information on how we route the game, uh, or on or we're going to explain to you how when to upgrade things. You know, the routing basically. Um, we're also going to I'm also going to show you how to access the resources that are available to you uh, that we have, such as routing documents and other things that'll help you if you want to really improve. But that's more for advanced players. But we're going to tack it on here anyway. Um, shall I get started? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. uh, I do want to add that you've you've uh, um, you're responsible for a lot of the resources we have, and they are significant. There's a lot. Yeah, uh, it can be there. overwhelming. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Which is so one of the reasons yeah. why. So we're gonna go take it step by step, and I'm gonna mention that like I'm gonna I'm gonna make it very clear when a resource is like for an advanced player, or don't even worry about it. If you're a beginner, learn how to do this first. It, it's a much better. Uh, uh, use of your time. Okay, so first let's just go over the basic rules of the category. So for 100% in Doom Eternal, you must complete the game as quickly as possible while collecting all the weapons, upgrading all the weapons fully, including their masteries. You have to upgrade all the suits. You have to um, collect all the codexes. This is important that I'm mentioning codexes because some experienced players might say, well, isn't that covered by this category or this requirement, which is that you must collect all the collectibles in the levels and in Fortress of Doom, all, specifically all the track collectibles that are available in the Honeycomb. Now, the reason I mention why am I mentioning codexes when aren't all the codexes available on levels? No, actually, they are not. Uh, some uh, specifically all the demon codexes and enemy codexes are acquired by killing demons. So. Which isn't really an issue, you don't have to think about it in this category. You're killing enough stuff and you can kill enough stuff anyway that you don't have to think about it. But there are a few that aren't collectible in the map or don't show up in this honeycomb or in the end screen verification uh, that do show up in this list. And there's four. There's the four Elena Richardson logs in Arc Complex, as you can see here, is one of them. And as you can see, it doesn't show up on the map as a question mark or any item. And there's one in the Fortress of Doom, which is the custom suit, and I'm going to go over that in a second. So let me demonstrate this, for example, here. Pick up that, and then, as you can see, we have that little notification on over here. And if we go to the codex, you can see that there's one of her logs. And there's four in this level, and you have to pick up all four. 
Now we're going to go to the end of the level to cover how to, uh, some verification needs for when you're running this category. So when you exit or when you uh, end a level, you're going to show up on this screen right here. And we actually want you to show this completely. Now, as you can see, this takes a while if I were to do all the combat and all the challenge exploration, but take time for the bars to fill up. So what you can quickly do is you can navigate to rewards and then back to summary and it'll fill them up really quickly. And you can do that by pressing E and Q really quickly. And that'll skip that animation, then you can hit space right after EQ space. Uh, it might be different for controller, but it should be just as fast. Um, one note about combat, which I regret, I which I just skipped over and I should have clarified on the map. Um, I'll try and do that in a second here. Um, combat rating specifically when it's when I set all weapon points weapon points are acquired by acquiring combat rating um, and we'll I'll go back into the level actually and I'll show you what I mean by that but for now I just want to show you the final codex the custom suit codex and how to get get it so there is three unlockable suits in the fortress of doom there's one over here there's one over here and there's one over here um, if you unlock one of them, any one of them, it doesn't matter which one, you will get a codex entry. So we're going to do that now. Um, and it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't matter which one. You're going to see runners unlock this one because there is a secret right under it and we're already here. Might as well do that. We can hit T in space and there you go. Or not T, use. T is a use for me. You're going to see. Uh, I unlocked a codex and here it is custom skin so those are the four that you need it's a little bit disjointed I know and I forgot the weapon points thing uh, I'm gonna go back to them in a second so we're gonna go back to we're gonna open up a different save here a second where we're in the end game so this is a fully completed save so after you defeat the icon of sin the game will actually put you back in the fortress of doom here then what you do is you open up the dossier again you navigate to Arsenal, and you show that you have collected all the weapons and upgraded all of them. You don't have to scroll through each one by one, by one because just the color of this hex over here shows you that you've mastered it. Okay? Then you go to Suit and show that you've upgraded everything. And then you can go to Codex and you scroll through each one to show that you've collected all of them. Preferably slowly, but it's not really required. We'll see. Yeah, as long, as long as we can see it, as it's long fine. as we can see that there is that there is no question marks here, and it's like really easy to see yeah. whether there's a question mark no. or not. So, if you want some sanity, uh, like maybe I missed something or I didn't, I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't show the end screen properly, you can do some additional verification here. If you've collected all the toys, this shelf should be completely filled with toys. Looks okay. very cool. If you collected all the albums, you'll see them pop up over here. There's an album there, there's an album there, right? You'll see them all over the map, so if you want, you can open up the dossier again and show a look around, and the moderators can even count the albums to make sure that you mm -hmm. have all of them, if you're really concerned and really worried. And then finally, you can use the computer, and if you've collected all the cheat codes, Doom 1 over here, the one I'm selecting, will be unlocked. So that's the way you verify the game. Okay, so that's all the tools you'll need to uh, verify the game. Okay, so... yeah. And um, I'd add one thing, which is 100% is all trackable. Um, uh, yeah, we should clarify that, yeah. Anything that can be, yeah. Yeah. Anything that can be tracked that we can point to and say, hey, look, it shows up. After we pick it up, it shows up somewhere, basically. Yeah. In so, for way. instance, um, auto maps, it's not a requirement. We don't yeah. we don't need to open all every auto map in every level, except there's one exception, which is Doom Hunter base, because it's, uh, it's a challenge. challenge. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, you don't need to do those because they're not tracked by the game. And I think there are f maybe one or two secret areas w which you can access, which don't aren't tracked, and we don't care about those. Yeah. We just care about what Drake just talked about. Yeah. Okay. So another thing I should clarify, because I messed up, um, mission uh, mission challenges also count towards this. So let me do it again from top to bottom. Every weapon, all the upgrades. Okay. All the suit upgrades, all the codexes, okay, all the collectibles in the map, and all the challenges, okay, and then to verify, and then the weapon points I'm going to talk about right now because I messed up and didn't do it in our complex, but um, so yeah, with the weapon points, 
The weapon points are a bit weird, so there's multiple ways to track them. On the map you'll see, uh, or on the demonic corruption bar you see up there in the top right, it counts like this thing called com that we call combat rating. When you fill up one bar, it gives you a weapon point, okay? That weapon point you can then use and we can track, of course, right? However, those weapon points are usually associated with fights called combat encounters. Now, there's some weird properties about these combat encounters. They will show up on the map, okay? Like this one right here that I just teleported into. As you can see, this is a combat encounter. And if I kill everything here, it will give, it will fill up this meter here a little bit. Um, now, not all fights that show up on the map like this fill up the meter, right? So you might say, you might think like, oh, you, I need to fill up, uh, do all the fights that have this sort of symbol on the map, but actually they don't fill up the meter and we don't worry about those. There's six of them in total, four of them on Hell on Earth, and we don't know how to skip them unless you're playing unrestricted and we're not really covering unrestricted in this uh, circumstance. We'll cover, we'll discuss uh, the rule set in a second. Um, and then there's two that do show up on the map, but don't give any rating, only two. And one is on Mars Core, one is on Neck 2. You don't really have to worry about it, but all you have to worry about is that you get the max amount of weapon points and we can count that. On the end level screen, after you've upgraded all of your weapons, you should have eight weapon points. If you've uh, on the end, uh, end, end game screen. End after game, killing, yeah. end, end game screen. Yeah. So once you've killed the yeah. uh, final sin, you open, you go to the Fortress of Dune, open your, uh, open this menu, and you should have all weapons upgraded and eight remaining weapon points. Yeah. And that's how we know we've uh, you've done all the combat encounters. Yes. Okay. So. With that, so those are the, so those are the rules of the um, those are the rules of the category. Now we want to talk about the rule set, and w and and what run we're going to be presenting throughout this series. So we're going to be commentating over a run done by Zai a few months ago. Uh, it is done on Ultra Nightmare and it's played on the restricted rule set. We don't want to get into too much detail about what this rule set, rule set entails. <laughs> no, we because don't. Because <laughs> it would take a while. There's a lot of rules. There's a lot of banned tricks and those tricks. We don't want to explain them. Moreover, this yeah. rule set is constantly in fluctuation because new tricks are found that we're not sure fits into the rule set or the spirit of the rule set. So instead, uh, we're just going to point you to the speedrun.com website where you can look up the rules yourself. If you have any questions about what tricks are banned or not tr uh, banned, um, feel free to contact us in the Discord. Try not to add all the mods, just ask in general, and then people will will just sort of answer you. Yeah, yeah. everyone's really helpful. Yeah, we're, we're really helpful there, okay? Yeah. Um, so that, that's what the rule said. Okay, so... The, the, the short version of the rules is no major glitches inbound. So yeah. don't clip through stuff, don't don't go where yeah. you can't see any geometry, your stuff doesn't load. And don't, don't do crazy do any... tricks that send you flying exactly. through the sky at like, like straight up or you know crazy stuff like that um basically it's like basically the the, the reason the rule set kind of existed is because we wanted to make a, a more fun sort of um speed run and this rule set and the reason we're not going to go into another reason we're not going to go into in too much detail here is because it doesn't just apply to this category there are other categories that use that rule set um so we're not going to get into too much detail with that is there anything else uh when it comes to the rules that we want to cover no that, that's kind of it you know you can we can, as you said, we can talk about the rules for a very long time. And, yeah. But th the purpose of the rules is to have like a, a as intended, or at least as yeah. as intended Closer as possible. To intended. Yeah. yeah. So there's a there's a lot of debate as what's intended or not. But as Drake it's said, irrelevant. Just, yeah, it's irrelevant yeah. what's intended. It's just we want to make a cool speed game, basically. Exactly. We want it cool. We want it fun, and we want people to enjoy themselves. So uh, don't don't if you don't want to do any glitches or anything really too crazy, and want to complete the game. Um, UN um, kind of face a challenge as it was almost designed to be. Well, this is a category you want to do. Yeah, uh, this this is probably the category that I imagine the developers would enjoy the most because it really covers the most breadth of the game. Okay, so uh, with that said, like I said, the the run we are, or we're going to be commentating over is run by Zai. Um, it's not up to date completely on some routing, but it's close enough. Also, it's played on, like I said, Restricted and Ultra Nightmare. And the route I'm going to go over and like what's upgrade and stuff like that and where to fast travel and where blah, 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 is going to be based on Ultra Nightmare gameplay, um, which means 
And you might be thinking like, what's the difference? Well, because in Ultra Nightmare, you can't reload checkpoint. And when you start to incorporate reload checkpoint, it gets really complicated and really messy. I'm not gonna bother with trying to figure out how to route that. We've only done routing for that. We're gonna do it for that. And most people play it that way. Even people who play 100% uh, on non Ultra Nightmare, but still restricted, probably don't play, play it without reloading a checkpoint. So I'm not gonna focus too much on that, just as a, as a disclaimer. Okay, so let's get started with the routing. Let's start with some simple little things. Let's start with uh, which runes you wanna get. Pretty simple, right? The first and most obvious one, if you've watched any speedrun uh, of Doom Eternal, is air control. I think every category gets air control first, and categories that don't require that you pick up any runes at all will still get air control, because it's just that powerful, okay? Then we get blood field, and then we get, uh, which increases your movement speed after, um, actually I should probably specify what air control does, but it's actually very complicated what air control does. It does actually do what it says here. You can greatly move in the air, like side to side and stuff like that, but it also does something uh, that source players may have heard of, or may, may know of, it increases your air acceleration. So you can air strafe a little tighter, but that's more complicated. I'm not going to get into it. Point is very powerful. I actually didn't know that. I yeah. yeah. Like it allows that. you to air strafe in the air. It, okay. it allows you to turn corners much tighter in, in the air when yeah. you're air strafing. Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to get into details about that. I'm sure. Not of course. Yeah. We'll, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than that. It's just but good to said, have it. And also, by the way, even if you're like, well, I, I don't really care about the movement. I'm just a beginner. I'm just learning. It's still good to have because you'd be surprised how often in fights, you just are like in chaos and you just need to dodge stuff midair. It's actually yeah, surprising saying, how, how good it is in, in, in fights. I was going to make the alive. exact same point, which yeah. is regardless of speedrunning, it's a great rune for UN because it increases survivability a lot because yeah. you have a lot more mobility, a lot more control over your movement. The first time I played with air control, I felt like I, f I, felt like I was playing a, like a guy on rollerblades on, on a ship. It, it felt yeah. really weird because... It was difficult for me to to get used to the movement, but it's it's so important. It helps so much for you. Anna. I can tell you, most top runners, we all say like the only reason we don't play low percent. One of the biggest reasons we don't play low yeah. percent, like a like a category that requires we to get as little things as possible, is because we'd have to skip air control. And it's yeah. like, oh my god, we don't want to do that, right? It's, it's, it's <laughs> air control is marvelous. It's wonderful, and also it saves time. It's safe. It's just the best room to get. Period. Yeah, and it helps with a lot of tricks as well, dash yeah, boost yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, so like, it's a, a lot of stuff. Like, yeah. It's it's yeah. too much to even mention. We, we won't get too much into detail. <laughs> yeah. So Bloodfield uh, now what Bloodfield does is that it does what it says: gain boost, uh, gain a speed boost after performing a glory, glory kill. What it doesn't say is that that speed boost also applies to chainsaw kills, berserk kills, and crucible kills. And this is most relevant for chainsaw kills because we actually don't do that many glory kills unless we're absolutely required. Uh, glory killing, the only way to kill a buff totem is glory killing it. And the only way to glory kill, uh, or the only way to kill a Doom Hunter boss is to glory kill it. And those are the only glory kills we actually want to mand do mandatory. Um, there are a few in the early game. One of the fastest ways to kill early game Kako Demons is to glory kill him with a trick you'll see later. Um, but by then we won't even be close to a rune. After we get this rune, we'll be killing Kakos in faster ways anyway. It's not that important. So generally we're going to be avoiding glory kills, but this is still nice to have because we chainsaw a bunch and we do crucible kills and bruiser kills and all the other stuff. Then there's savagery. There are uh, enough, um, or excuse me, let me explain what savagery does. Savagery increases the amount of time or decreases the amount of time it takes to finish a glory kill. There are enough mandatory glory kills that this just saves time and it's nice to have. Now, the rest of them aren't really that useful or they're useful for safety. Um, specifically, saving throw, we're actually going to get this fourth. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. If we die, it gives us another chance. Um, so that time, blah, blah, blah. Then there's... Then after we get the fourth rune, you can literally pick up any one of them. That's not to say all of them are useless. In fact, uh, this one, Dazed and Confused, is actually very useful. Specifically, it can be used for safety. It's actually pretty nice for safety because when you stagger the demon, it just stays stagger for way longer and they become and then you can just ignore them and like focus on staying alive and stuff like that you don't have to like run at them and kill them right away you can run away after you've staggered them so it's nice for safety most top runners won't use it for that they will use it to make sure that the glory kill challenges in neck one and neck two are easier but we'll get to that mainly because um super heavy stay staggered for much less time and this really helps with with those challenges the rest of them they're just they may seem useful but to keep it short, in practice, they aren't. Like, it's like, yeah, take, for example, Equipment Fiend. 
it's nice, but in practice, it takes a lot to get even one extra grenade shot. Or like, one, like this demonstration is very misleading. It looks like you can just double nade all the time after you, like, it's not like that. It's very, and on top of that, grenades aren't that powerful. But yeah, so the rest of them aren't that useful. So to recap, first we get air control, then we get blood field, then we get savagery, and then we get um, saving throw, and then we can get the rest of them. Yeah, I would add um, Chrono Strike is is good for beginners and players that are yeah. kind of starting out because it's yeah, a yeah. bit of yeah it, it, it's useful because it helps um, helps land key shots. So uh, in yeah. particular, maker drones and stuff like that. Um, in uh, starting Erdak and uh, a bit later on, um, it's very useful. You know, you, you're sure to land that headshot. Or you're sure to land that weak point shot, uh, and it's also uh, use. Yeah, you know, we're gonna we're gonna be mastering precision bolts, so it actually could mm -hmm. be helpful for for newer players. Yeah, wanna, it's true. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah, also and it's it, also helpful for a trick that we're gonna do called yeet hooking. You don't need this mm -hmm. to do yeet hooking. We're gonna use the weapon wheel instead. But yeah, lawyer, I forgot to mention that. That's that's a good. Point, no, it's right? fine. It's fine. Yeah. But that's why you know yeah. we're both on the. Uh, and it's also good for survivability. Like if you have, yeah, uh, senses, yeah. yeah, if you're in a tricky spot. And you have Chrono Strike, you can kind of slow down time, look around, not look around, but take that extra second to think, okay, yeah. where do I want to go? Where's what? What's my next step? Um, so I, when I started running, well, when I started playing UN at least, uh, I found Chrono Strike to be very useful. After a while, it kind of messes up your rhythm more than anything else. Uh, but at this, when you're starting off, it's not a bad thing to have. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um, what, another thing I should note. Why don't we get Days and Confused like fifth? Because the last rune is at Mars Core. And so the glory kill challenges that really give us trouble are after Mars Core. So you can get any. I mean, yeah, you can literally just hit the rune button after you've collected four and just like pick any one. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So now into suits. So these four over here are the exploration ones you can completely ignore. I only got this one because I wanted to do, I want to show off like what are collectibles here, right? That's the only reason I got one, but you wouldn't get these. Um, if you are if you play this game enough, you'll memorize all this. It's not that difficult to memorize where all the location of the collectibles are. So we don't worry about these. The first three that we get, and most categories, by the way, get these because they're that, that powerful, is Hot Swapper. Specifically, we get Hot Swapper in this category first. Then we get Faster Dasher and then Grappler. Hot Swapper is amazing because it decreases the amount of time it takes to switch between weapons. Now in Doom Eternal, you can decrease the cooldown of weapons by switching between switching to another weapon and then switching back. So if I shoot a PV shot, or uh, if I shoot the precision bolt, switch to the combat shotgun, switch back to the heavy cannon, the precision bolt will actually be recharged faster than it would be if I, if I just shot a precision bolt shot and didn't switch weapons. I can also switch between weapons uh, like for example, I can switch. I can shoot the precision bolt, switch to the ballista, shoot that, switch back to the precision bolt, and there's actually a much faster, uh, higher damage rate. Right? This this upgrade increases our damage rate dramatically, dramatically. Faster dash is pretty self-explanatory. It's a speed game. We want to go fast. Dashing's fast. Get it. Grappler is also self-explanatory. We grab ledges occasionally, many times. This makes it faster. Now there's two that I want to mention that in this category help with speed, and, I'm, and I want to mention them, I'm going I'm to categorize them as the speed upgrades outside of the outside of the basic three. The first one, and they're, the first one is a relatively new one. You won't see this in Zaya's, uh, Zaya's personal best that we're going to be commentating over, and that is explosive piñatas. Uh, this gives us a little bit of ammo every time we break a barrel. Um, this helps particularly in arc complex and it cuts out chainsaws. Honestly, if I were a beginner, I wouldn't worry about it. I would just get thicker skin because it keeps you nice and safe. And I wouldn't even worry about it. Chainsaw, way too much if you want to. That's fine. Um, but it's worth mentioning that's what, that's one of the speed upgrades. Yeah, the other speed barrels are, are yeah, the bane ahead. of... Uh, I've died so many times to barrels. Yeah, yeah, their, yeah. their damage is insane. And I didn't completely echo what Drake said. Yeah. Don't worry too much about chainsaw management, ammo management, and stuff yeah. like that on your first few runs. You, or even your first 10, honestly. I wouldn't even worry yeah, about it. Yeah. Yeah. it, it you want ammo, so it doesn't matter if you're not you're not doing that triple chainsaw on that specific mancubus, whoever. Or if you're like optimizing, like yeah, yeah. So like, who cares? We get it in the run. Like, I would still recommend you get it, but we're gonna get thicker skin as opposed to say regenerating barrels, which yeah. can net you some extra ammo here and there. But I'd just get thicker skin. 
right? Mm -hmm. But again, I'll get to the safety ones later. Then we have fast dry cooldown. This one saves, I think, about 10 seconds in Taurus and Abad because we do back-to-back -back Marauder kills. In this game, in earlier patches, you can kill Marauders by distracting with an Ice Bomb. You just toss it over their head. They look up at the Ice Bomb, turn around, and you just shoot them in the back with rockets. And it kills them. It's a really quick kill. And this and this uh, saves time because it... Uh, because we, if without it, we'd have to wait a long time for Ice Bomb to come off cooldown, and we'd have to do a really slow kill. But we don't get it, but this this upgrade, this Fast Strikes cooldown, we don't need to get it till Taurus, right? So it's not like you get these three and then immediately get Fast Strikes. No, 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 you just get these three, and then get some other crap, and then you come back. Same thing with Barrels. We only need it for our Complex mainly. That's where it mainly saves time. The rest of these upgrades, we get them because we can. Either, either because they're safe, like for example, combustion concussion, which falters, which increases the falter range of grenades, which is really nice, or permafrost, which increases how long they stay frozen, uh, ice drops, you know, more nades, or having two nades. Then having two nades, nades don't deal that much more damage. Having two of them is just nice because then you, you spend one, and then you, if you're in trouble, you can throw it on the ground and just falter everything around you, right? Um, or we get them because we can, like they're fast, but. If we didn't have to get them, we wouldn't get them because they're like not that spectacular. An excellent example of this is uh, Frostbite, which increases damage to frozen enemies by 25%. That may sound like a lot, but in practice, it's like it saves a little bit of like quarter of a second here, saves an extra precision bolt there. Like it's not, it's not like my, it's not like an explosive like oh my god, like my brain's exploding. That, that's how good this thing is. It's it's not that good. It, and it's, not, it's made even worse if you don't have permafrost. So you kind of have to get both at the same time. Point is, don't worry about it. We just get them because we can. It's not because there's some like, you know, deeper concept behind, behind them. Okay. So to clarify, we get these three first. Uh, in the run, we actually get these two things because this one helps with uh, some killing some demons in our complex. This helps with safety. We don't need anything else at the time so we can get these two, which is nice. Then we get uh, then we get barrel ammo, uh, barrel ammo and thicker skin because that's about the time we'd have it. Like we we upgraded about the time before we go to arc, um, and then right before the arc slayer gate we upgrade uh, permafrost and frostbite. You won't see it. This order won't be correct in Zai's record because this this uh, barrel ammo is a relatively new occurrence. So keep that in mind. Um, but that's the general order, and then the rest we kind of just get because we can here and there. There's no specific reason. Um, so yeah, there's there's your upgrade path, like uh, fundamentals, and then some stuff here and there for small reasons that you don't really have to think about or worry about. Okay, now the big one, arsenal. Oh boy, this has spent, this has taken hours of my life away, hundreds of hours perhaps <laughs> in my life away, trying to figure out what to upgrade, when to upgrade it. It is a massive, massive web nest of problems. But let's start with some simple little facts. First and foremost, to get the mastery, you have to complete a challenge. Let me grab, let me select lock number. So you have to complete a challenge that's listed here. You can only start completing the challenge after you've fully upgraded the weapon, otherwise. The challenge can be skipped by spending a mastery token and you can get the effect of the mastery. Oh, I forgot what, you know what? Forget all that, we're gonna go back here for a second. I forgot to mention Sentinel Crystal Routing. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, we'll talk about Arsenal in a second. Sentinel crystal routing is actually relatively simple. Ammo crystals doesn't matter which one: flame belt, flame uh, belt armor boost, armor for blood, loot magnet. Uh, which other one? Napalm belch. Doesn't matter which ammo crystal. It recharges all your ammo, except crucible. That includes BFG. It will refill your BFG ammo. That's very important. So we route. So we pick up ammo crystals based on when we need BFG. Specifically, we get one ammo crystal early. Then we pick up one ammo crystal in Mars, or second ammo crystal all the way in Mars core because, because of some BFG ammo routing there. And then we pick it up again in Taurus because of BFG. And then again in Erd, like it's all because of BFG uh, routing, right? The rest of them we get because they're kind of nice or they're safe. In the route document that I'm gonna show later, I recommend that you get armor for blood early. Most top runners don't do this um, because they'll be on there playing Ultra Nightmare and Loot Magnet is just safer. So they get the so they get Loot Magnet upgrades versus... Loot Magnet is huge. It's, yeah. it's huge. 
I disagree, but I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> no, it's huge. It's huge for survivability. It's huge for survivability. Again, I'm going to disagree, but that's oh, besides okay. the point. Okay, it's I huge for survivability level, I think, of I think new at players. Their level, yeah, I think at their level, they can get away with not it. But no, of like course, a, of at course. a younger, like if you're an earlier player, like just get loot magnet. It's yeah. fine. Like it's just it means that you don't have to be as careful around chainsawing, or like you don't have to like run over health or something. Like it's it's just peace of mind with loot magnet. But the rest is just like details that I want to get into. Basically, the only reason, the, basically, the primary driving goal of crystal routing is ammo management. And then everything else around it just kind of fits in, really. Okay, so back to the arsenal. Uh, right. Just a second oh. on, on the uh, crystal. So you, you're, you're proposing the optimal route with regards to, um, to ammo management and, and uh, the suit upgrades, but. Like in a nutshell, if you had to advise a new player who's completed UN maybe once or twice and who's looking to do UN a hundred percent, who's not very comfortable with the idea of of um, it's not not very comfortable with the idea, but not very comfortable uh, with completing a run a hundred percent easy, uh, no no worries, who might die to uh, uh, random stuff or who who isn't as good as as uh, Zay or whatever or whoever, uh, what in a nutshell, what would you advise for survivability, for a good balance between survivability and DPS? Um, our, admittedly, armor for blood doesn't. It gives you a few more, a few extra, like punches here and there in the early game, and it makes worrying about managing blood punches a little easier in the late game. So it's not that big of an impact to not get it, but basically the route that's listed and the route that top 100% runners use, that's pretty much about as safe as it gets. Um, I'm glad you mentioned that because there are some like I concepts that come into it. For example, like um, if you had to choose between say any health upgrade and any armor upgrade, which one would you get? You'd get health. Um, it's interesting because I, I asked myself that question. I kind of thought initially armor upgrades are better because you get more value out of flame belch that's and what you would think but yeah in, but percentage in wise yeah but it, the reason why you want to get health is because in chaotic situations you get health when you're low health you're going to get health from demons yeah true. and you're going to get and that health is proportional to your max health so you're going to get more if you're in trouble so it's just safe okay moreover even if you're not thinking uh, um, uh, risk and you're thinking speed having higher armor means you can uh, fill up with armor armor for blood or it's harder like if you have zero armor oh, you I have understand. max 150 yeah. then it's harder for you to get back up to full and then plus another 20 to get your armor for blood full uh, to, yeah. to fill up your blood punch so the bigger the armor tank yeah. the less useful armor yeah. for blood is so yeah so to, to go back on the thing like what route would I recommend pretty much exactly the same one the world record holders are doing right now um and what I'd recommend for them is to try armor for blood instead of loot magnet. But you should just do loot magnet if you're trying if you're starting out. It's just really nice. It's really convenient. Um, I just wish one day the top level runners be like, Nah, come on, Drake, for us. You were right the whole but, time. Get yeah. armor for blood. <laughs> <laughs> but they're never gonna do it because they love our loot magnet so much. But yeah, uh, as you said, you know, loot magnet is peace of mind, and uh, ammo is it, when you start off, ammo is good as well. You know. Um, yeah. The way I always said it, say it is ammo is HP to some extent. That is true. If that's you're why full HP, you chainsaw a bunch. Yeah, exactly. That that's exactly it. If you're full HP but you don't have any ammo, you uh, you might die to a demon. Uh, whereas if you have a lot of ammo and you're low on HP, you might never die to a demon. So, to some extent, you need to find a balance. But ammo is HP, and uh, as Drake just said. If, Chainsaw stuff. You're out of ammo. Chainsaw stuff. So don't think. Don't try to forehead everything. If you're dying, you could even chainsaw stuff because yeah. Like, if you're like 20 HP, you can chainsaw something. That will that demon will drop drop some health, and it will and give you get... time to think about what you want to do exactly. next. Like, oh, the hell nice behind me. The Arachnatron's to my left. Yeah. Okay. So let's go back to the arsenal. Yeah. Okay. So like I said, many hours of my life. Um, <laughs> some basics in order to master something, you need to have it fully upgraded first before you can start mastering it. We call this matri mastering it naturally because you're completing the challenge. If you master, you can also use a mastery token to skip this challenge. There are seven mastery tokens in this game, so to fully master every single weapon, um, you only actually need to mas naturally master six weapons or six mods. Excuse me. Um, 
However, there's a trick with the energy shield and the icon of sin that makes it essentially free to master naturally. Like completely and totally free. Not have to worry about a thing. We'll get to that when we get to final sin. It's very easy to do. But for all intents and purposes, you in reality you only have to master the thing, five things naturally. Okay, so with those basics in mind, I'm going to play a little thought experiment here. What would you upgrade if you didn't need to master anything? If you didn't need to master or upgrade anything here, right? Like if the requirements for the category were that you didn't need to master or upgrade anything, what would you master for speed? Let's get that out of the way first before we start talking about the route. So the first one would be bigger boom. This increases the radius of uh, sticky bomb explosions. This is really powerful, especially in categories that require that you complete the Exultius Slayer Gate. 100% requires that you complete it. The Exultius Slayer Gate benefits tremendously from this upgrade. There are some other parts throughout the game later on where you have to kill fodder in large amounts, and this really helps. But the Exultius Slayer Gate is the big one, where it saves many, many, lots, lots of time. The next one is both lock on burst upgrades, and in fact, dual lock itself, the mastery. But we'll get to that in a second. First, this just increases your damage output dramatically. Lock on burst for most demons is just the fastest way to kill them, especially with these upgrades. It's just absolutely the fastest way to kill them. Uh, and it's safe. It's and really it's safe. very safe. There's it's good range, it deals lots, it deals the most damage in the game, except for two super heavies, but that's detail we won't have to worry about. For most things, it's baller, and even if you're like, oh, that Baron takes less damage from lock on, it's still a lot of damage. Shoot mm -hmm. it with the lock on, it's the safest way to kill it. Don't worry about mm -hmm. it. Right? So these are the two we'd get. Dual lock is a little is a very recent development. Literally, I think a week and a half ago, I did the math and I found that dual lock actually saves time. And it's not for its primary effect. Its primary effect states that you can lock on to two targets and then when you shoot, one set will go to one and another set will go to the other. That's actually not the reason why it's good. It has a secondary effect. When you shoot the lock on burst and you try to switch to another weapon, there's a long delay, very long, about maybe almost a second. Dual lock decreases that delay. Right? And so in fact, you're going to see in our route that the first mastery token we pick up in Taras Nabad, we're going to upgrade dual lock because it decreases this time and it saves time over the run. Don't worry about it. You can, you, you can ignore that. You, can, you don't have to upgrade it at Taras Nabad. You can upgrade it at the end of the game with everything else. But it's worth mentioning. The next one we have is Quick Hook. This decreases the uh, amount of time that the uh, meat hook takes to recharge. Um, this is useful in... Some instances where we do back-to-back -back meat hooks. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. We need to do two hooks. This is upgraded in a few other categories as well. Um, then there's Flaming Hook. This one, uh, this one's really nice for staying alive and also for armor for blood and late game, um, making sure it's really consistent. Um, pretty self-explanatory. I won't go into too much detail. But And like if you can spare, like by then, you can spare the extra points to get the other upgrade. So... Yeah, quick hook and flaming hand if you can. Destroyer blade. Oh my goodness, this was quite a discovery. When Zaya and I were first routing this category, like really diving deep into routing this category, this was our the coolest discovery we made. How powerful destroyer blade is. This second upgrade right here, rapid change, just decreases the amount of time it takes to charge. But even this first upgrade is actually pretty nice because it falters demons around you, so that it once it's fully charged and you shoot a demon won't punch you in the face, shoot your hand up, and then you shoot it into the, to the air, missing everything. So while this one, in ideal circumstances, isn't useful, it's nice to have. It's a good upgrade, okay? But Rapid Change is the big, is the big boy. Rapid Change, excuse me, is the big boy one, the one that really saves time. Then there's a few, then there's one that doesn't save time, per se, but it's nice for safety, and that's faster recovery for Energy Shield. Energy Shield is comically powerful. It has 600 HP. It decays at 100 HP per second. But it has, but its effect is 360. A demon can attack you from above, below, from behind, the side, doesn't matter. It's going to block all that damage. It's wonderful. There is some funkiness with the gladiator. Like sometimes the gladiator will go through it, but it's like, it's incredibly overpowered for staying alive. And fast recovery just makes it so we can use it more often if we're in trouble. Okay. So recap. If we were forced, if we were, if we didn't have to upgrade anything, which one would we upgrade? Bigger boom for stickies. Lock on burst fully. Uh, quick Hook and Flaming Hook for Super Shotgun. Destroyer Blade. Uh, Destroyer Blade, uh, just the two one. This one isn't that useful. And then Energy Shield for safety. Now, some honorable mentions. Arbalist. Mm, 
kind of, here and there. Some weird behavior with Arbalist, uh, particularly with this upgrade, it deals less damage to a demon, to a certain demon with this upgrade. It's some complicated stuff. It's not that important, but yeah. Actually, I don't even know why I'm mentioning it. It's it's overly complicated for the scope of this, <laughs> this tutorial. Um, but I want to mention a few of these. I, I, actually, I know why, why I want to mention these. The reason why these are useful and I'm saying like, like for example, let's say like you're saying like, well, what about micro missiles? Micro missiles does huge amounts of damage. Short story, like long story short, comparatively no. Super shotgun is just, makes a lot of these weapons redundant, honestly. Like a lot of these weapons, like if you're like, oh, that does a lot of damage, probably super shotgun does more. Lock on does more, honestly. That's a short answer for a lot of it. I don't want to get into details, but that's generally it. Okay. So those are the upgrades we get. Cool, great, wonderful. Now we have to get them, all right? Which, how do we adjust this sort of, this, uh, this idea? Which ones are easier to master? Which ones are take less time to master? We need to figure out which ones we're gonna master naturally. There's still five we want to master naturally. So I'm gonna go through the route as it is right now, and then I'll explain why we do it that way. So first thing that we do is we upgrade Bigger Boom as soon as we have enough points in Exaltia. We upgrade Bigger Boom. We don't upgrade Quick Crack though. In fact, we don't even master uh, master sticky bombs ma uh, naturally. Why? Why not start mastering something right away? We'll get to that a little bit later, but that's what we do right now. So we get bigger boom, we don't start mastering it. Then the next thing we upgrade is lock on burst. Do we master it? No, we don't master it naturally. We don't even bother with this challenge. That's two, that's three upgrades we get that don't contribute to mastering anything naturally. Important to know. That may seem bad, but it actually works out. Well, so when do we actually start mastering something naturally? That comes as super, super shotgun. The challenge for it is to kill 50 demons while using the meat hook, right? This is actually very cheap to do because all you have to do is every time you're going for a kill with something on the super shotgun, just shoot it, just hook onto it before you hit mouse one and shoot, right? Very, very simple. It's like, in theory, it's free. Like it costs no time. You don't have to farm or do anything like that. Very nice. Also. Because the first mastery token in the game is in Tars, most top level players can finish meat hook, finish mastering flame hook before that. So it's nice for yeah. safety. It's just the fastest way to to, to get. Flame yeah, hook. and for newer runners, I I almost advise you farm it because yeah, it, yeah, it gives such a survivability boost. Yeah. Acute little yeah. note: when you super shotgun something that's on fire via the flame hook, it gives thirty armor as opposed to the normal twenty. Um, that you would get from any other weapon when they're on fire. There's some more complications there, but like, especially Flaming Hook is really powerful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the first one you start mastering. So that's one thing, one out of five. Okay, what's the next thing? Precision Bolt. Precision Bolt has an, uh, a good mastery, and it's one of those things I wanted to mention in the previous segment about what we would upgrade. But by the time it's useful, mm, we already have a bunch of other things to clear fodder, right? Like a bunch of other things. But the challenge for this is to kill 75 demons with headshots. This may seem like a lot. Um, to top level runners, it isn't. But I would still recommend it even for lower level runners because getting headshots is fun. The intro is fun, right? And the mastery is awesome. And if you're really good about it, and you, even if you farm it a little bit, you can get it done before Taurus if, you, if you're really, really good about getting headshots. It's really fun. It's a nice challenge. Um, and, in, and speaking in terms of ideal play, it's pretty much free. It's pretty much free. You um, do you have you do enough PB shots that if you get like seventy five percent headshot ratio, it's not outlandish. And it gets you working on that um, quick swapping. You, you, yes, so you, very, yeah. Since you want to do it quickly, you're going to be quick swapping between precision bolt and whatever other weapon. You're going to be dead swapping to be very specific, yeah. which is you're going to shoot a precision bolt swap and then not even shoot with the weapon you swap to, is but swap back the precision swapping? bolt. Yeah. Is that a Doom twenty sixteen phrase? I've never heard it in Doom uh, Journal. Seriously. Yeah, never, uh, I mean, nobody's ever said it that way. Huh, cool. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, that, that, oh, we just I've, heard people, yeah. I've heard people call talk about dead swapping, and I've always assumed that was dead swapping, which is going from shooting a precision bolt, swapping weapon, and swapping back to precision bolt without actually sh shooting, yeah, just yeah. because it's uh, faster. We do, swapping we do both that with ways. a super shotgun for some quick kills. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I never knew that was a term. Okay, that's cool. You learn something every day. All right. <laughs> So precision bolt. So that's our second thing that we're going to master naturally. Our third is going to be destroyer blade. Destroyer blade's awesome. In fact, destroyer blade's so awesome. We use it so often that it's basically free, like completely and totally free. You will 
play this game sometimes and you just accidentally master Destroyer Blade because it's just that it, it speeds up so many fights. It's awesome, right? Not even worth mentioning the details behind it. What about the mastery? Is it good? It's not, the mastery's kind of crap. It doesn't matter. Like it just, it's useful in some instances and yeah. um, uh, the DLC, uh, the Ancient Guards part, uh, Gods part yeah. one, there's some things there, but we're not playing the Ancient Gods part one. So we don't have to worry about it. It's not, it's not important. It's just easy to master. It's a baller upgrade. Awesome. Basically free. So that's three upgrades that with perfect play is like basically free. And if they're not free, they're fun or safe. Awesome. Great. I, it's almost as if I made this round and I really like it. <laughs> All right, uh, so what's the fourth one? This is where it starts to get like, oh, we're starting to lose time. And that is Arbalist. Where's Arbalist? Uh, Arb Ar Arbalist. Okay. Um, Arbalist, the requirement is that you kill 20 Caco Demons with Arbalist. Now you might think that Arbalist is good at killing Caco Demons. The problem is, is that it takes a while to charge up and lock on burst is kind of similar. Also two ballista shots kill a Caco Demon anyway. And if you dead swap them, like lawyer just mentioned, okay. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a quicker kill if, if you have to, like if you see a Caco Demon spawn and then you start charging, it's faster to just shoot it twice with the ballista. We might say, well, what if you pre-charge? Well, there's actually very few opportunities where that actually happens. So Arbalist, if you could avoid it, if you had, like if you could avoid it, would like you would, because it does cost time, but it does, you know, save time here and there. And at the end of the day, when you look at holistically and all the other options you have to master, it's very cheap comparatively, and it can save time here and there, right? So we get that. And the timing is specific. We get it right before Mars Core because that's when we encounter a lot of meatballs. It's a very nice timing for the Arbalist. Okay, so last one, micromissiles. Micromissiles are just not very good. In Doom 2016, micromissiles the explosion moved mm. the Doom Slayer and you could use them to jump into places you weren't supposed to or speed up movement or something. That's not the case. They don't improve, they don't, they, they're not nearly as powerful. Um, like I said before, you would think, oh, the damage is really high or something like that. No, <laughs> it's, not, it's not that good. Like it's nice in some instances, but like it's never really the ideal option. Um, but it is very easy to master naturally. And in fact, if with perfect play, it's free pretty much. Uh, the primary reason is because there's a lot of spots in the end game. Uh, I think, yeah, from, from Mars. Yeah, maybe you can say what the challenge is. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I forgot about the challenge. The challenge is that you have to stick three demons, three enemies, excuse me, with a missile. And just hit them. You don't you even need to them. kill you them. You have to kill them. You yeah. have to... So that might see, sound easy. Why don't you start upgrading that earlier? It's fast. Well, because like you have to you have to pull out the, pull out the, uh, pull out the heavy cannon, swap away from the precision bolt, and then stick three demons, right? It's not as clunky and clean as you would think. Like mm. when we first started writing it, we were like, oh, that's that sounds terrible. We have to stop, pull it out, you know. But what we found over time is that instead you can there's a lot of fights and a lot of instances where you're just waiting and there just happens to be demons around. Right. And And you could tag the same three demons. And over you can and, yeah, over and, and over. that's an important detail I forgot. You can tag the same three demons and they'll count. So you tag three, uh what's it called like put the put the micro missiles away like they have to fully close and then you open mm -hmm. them again and then shoot the same three and it's really easy and and because there's a lot of time we spent waiting for example like in final sin there's a few spots where you can give like five ticks just by waiting for something to spawn um Erdak is another example there's a couple fights there where you're just waiting um so that's why and in essence it's free now a lot of the ticks you have to get in order for this to be free are at the icon of sin <laughs> fight like while he's doing his pre-mandatory like rage fits hitting the ground while you're waiting for him to die um and we'll get to the details of that when we get to final sin as a beginner don't even worry about zamai the current world record holder as of the recording of this video doesn't even bother doing micro muscle ticks at icon of sin you don't need to do it if you want to go for mega big brain world record it's gonna it's gonna be risky there because you're gonna do those but the case in point is that there's a lot of spots where uh, micro missiles ticks are really free and so that's why we get it okay so let's do a recap we get sticky bombs bigger boom specifically we don't master it we get lock on burst we don't master it naturally we then start mastering meat hook then precision bolt then destroy blade then arbalist and then finally micro missiles okay um yeah okay so, 
Now I want to get into the point, the part where, the part that really took me hours of my life away. And that is the, uh, the documents that I use. Let's say you're watching this video. Actually, I'll get to that in a second. I, I want to specifically just mention how to navigate the route document because people will open it up and it'll look really scary and there's all these details about it. I want to go through it one by one very slowly. The reason I mention this is because this route could change. And it's easier for us to update a route document that's in text rather than to make another tutorial series. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, so, so that's why I want to teach you how to navigate this stuff and how to access the resources that we have in our Discord um, and that we have in our community. Okay. So first, let's open up Discord. And we're going to go to our speedrun Discord. And here it is. Okay. Well, can we move this? Can we, can we not get Inception? Whatever. That's fine. I'm going to call with lawyer. All right. Um, so here's the Discord. Here's the resources channel, right? We're in the resources channel. Down here, we have a table of contents. We have how to set up the game. We have how to improve your frame rates. We have how to down patch to different to lower versions. We have tools for testing and practice. These aren't allowed when you're doing actual runs, but when you want to practice something, you can use them. Here's our list of documents that include game knowledge, like things like spawn location, triggers, you know, how to do this, how to do that, blah, blah, blah. Then the route documents that we're going to go over in a second. And then we have tutorials. You just simply click on these while you're in the Discord app and it will push you to the post ab uh, above. All right, go up to setup. And then you can click this one to go back to the table of contents. So we're going to go to routes. We're going to select this one over here, 100%, the 100% route. Let me scooch that over here. So here it is. Here's what you're going to be greeted with. Okay. First, so don't don't print this. I've I've, I've printed this. So don't, it's a yeah, black background. Yeah. <laughs> I I will mention this. I have this I have this set up for for dark mode because a lot of the time I spent on this it was at nighttime and I didn't want to like I didn't want to strain my eyes. So to set this up for dark mode, um, there are some dark mode apps. Whatever the case may be, I have a I have a dark mode plugin for for Chrome. But the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you enable the table of contents here by clicking this button here. All right, so you can go whichever part you want to go to. Then you can disable the page breaks over here. Let me show you. You have these page breaks that take up a lot of space. You can click over here, view, print layout, and there you go. Okay, so I'm gonna read this out and I wanna be very careful with this. Because this category is essentially all combat encounters, or ace category, plus some stuff, the ammo, oh, that's a mistake. The ammo section of this document will be formatted as an add-on to the, to the ACE route document. So what is ACE? What is all combat encounters? All combat encounters is all the fights. Remember those, um, remember these fights over here that I showed you? These are called combat encounters, right? And that category requires that we complete all those combat encounters, right? So ACE is 100% is without picking, without, without picking collectibles. up the items, without the missions. Yeah. yeah. The reason I'm mentioning this is because all combat encounters, 100% is basically ACE plus all that stuff. And the routing is actually very similar. So I formatted the document this way so that it's easier for me, but also, and this is where some people may disagree with me, I actually strongly recommend that you learn the ACE category first. Why? Yeah, because, that's a great point. Yeah, the ACE category you focus, the hardest part of 100% is the fights. Hmm. The, the, the things that are, that are gonna kill you, they're, the spawn locations are challenging and complicated, the mechanics you need to stay safe and do them fast are very um, very progressive. Like the better you get at them, the faster you're gonna be in general. Whereas like if you just focus on everything all at once, it's kind of overwhelming. A lot of the tricks to use to uh, acquire collectibles specifically are really challenging and don't really translate to other areas. So that's why I'd recommend learning this first. Some people may disagree with me. I'm glad Lawyer does agree with me on this one at no, least. No, no. But that's how I went about it, to be honest. I started with NMG, and then I said, well, yeah. I'm going to play Ace because it's it's fun. You know, combat is fun. And honestly, I don't enjoy picking up stuff. I don't think it's a lot of fun, so I, yeah. I didn't do it. But once you've done, like, just a UN clear, do an Ace clear where you do all the Slayer gates, all the secret encounters, and it's going to be so much easier to progress from yeah. um, UN, NMG to Ace than it is from nothing at all to 100%. That's going to be so difficult. It's going to be so much work. So that kind of progression makes a lot of sense to me. And working on ACE before you work on 100%, I think it's a great idea. I think it's great advice. Okay. So to clarify this ammo section, 
there's a section over here where I specify where you nade, where you... Don't worry about it. This is the all combat encounters document, and this is the ammo section. Look at this. This is crazy. Don't bother. Ignore this. Don't even, don't even think about the ammo, right? This is for me, for when I'm counting, like, oh, BFG here, this fight. It's, it's, don't even worry about it, right? Forget about this. What we want to focus on is don't even worry about this ammo section. Just focus on this part over here, right? When to upgrade, where to fast travel. And I'm going to teach you how to do that. For that, let me just clear some clear up some like nomenclature here. So again, we have that combat encounter term I mentioned before, and what that fight is. It's marked by these two swords, right? And that specifies here, for example, this is a fight, and I gave it a name. This name is based off the fast travel location that's nearest to it, right? This is the third fight of Exaltia, the third tracked fight of Exaltia, and this is its name, Central Rotunda One. There's two two fights there. That's why this is the first, okay? Uh, progression encounter that's basically a fight that's not tracked but under restricted gameplay you can you can't skip right or under intended gameplay that's just a nice little clarification there are some instances where you can skip these fights it's purely for naming don't worry about it too much uh, i pay attention to i did a lot of work figuring out what safety strategies pay attention to this symbol when you're browsing the dock right if you're trying to complete ultra nightmare you're going to notice things like I'm going to recommend things like, for example, getting energy shield early compared to the world record holder. Uh, for example, yeah. in Super Gornest, I recommend you get energy shield as soon as possible, right? And I mark those things with this symbol. Here we have skip. Here we have what you upgrade. Here's acquire or complete. And here's notations of where you fast travel. Okay, so how do we read this? Let me use this as an example right here, okay? After you complete the third tracked fight, the third combat encounter of Exaltia, you will upgrade bigger boom. That's what this part here means. All right, let's use another example here. During the first fight of Cultus Base with the double revenants, you complete this challenge armor raid, armored rain, and then get hot swapper. Okay? During the first boss, you upgrade this stuff. Here is another example. After you do the second control terminal of Super Gornest, you upgrade explosive pinatas, you upgrade regenerating barrels, or if you want for safety, thicker skin and Destroyer Blade. Notice how here I, I say Destroyer Blade, that means completely upgrade Destroyer Blade, right? Here I specify that you upgrade only Bigger Boom, here I specify you upgrade the entirety of Destroyer Blade. Same thing here with Super Shotgun, Lock on Burst, etc. All right, here it tells you which ammo crystals to get, which runes to get, all that sort of stuff. Okay, Fine. then one more thing to read. We're gonna scroll past the ammo section, which I told you to completely ignore. We're gonna go straight down to Masteries. This specifies which uh, where you're going to get your ticks for your masteries. I give some details about how to do like the energy shield trick and you know destroy blade and all those things I mentioned earlier. But you know arbalist, you need to figure out which meatballs you want to kill, right? So I mentioned which meatballs you want to kill. I want to reiterate something I set up here, which is you can adapt these and you can change these however you want. You can change this route however you want. This isn't like you must do it this way, otherwise you are a terrible person. No, no, no. For example, the world record holder gets five. Caco demons here. The technical, the, the the most optimal route would be to get just get one, right? The most optimal route. But he gets five because that's nice and safe. So this isn't anything strict, but all the information is here, right? Here's uh, where you get the meatballs. This is the micro missile ticks, right? Again, world record holder doesn't do any on icon of sin, so you don't have to worry about the specifics of that. But that's how you read this all. Okay. So that's how you read the doc. Hopefully it isn't too scary for you. I know there's a lot of information. It's really packed dense. Um, but take your time with it. If you have any questions, ask. For example, like, how do I remember the names of these locations? Like, I read this. Like, for example, let me go down to Erdak. All right. Um, what the hell is Combat Encounter 9 Xanthus Harmonizer 2? All right. That'll come with time. We have other documents, those, but I'm going to be hesitant to show you those because those are a little bit more advanced. All right. But if you have any questions about it, watch somebody else play or ask me or ask anybody in the Discord. We'll be happy to help you with any sort of details. Okay, so now you might be thinking, well, Drakefoss, that route sucks giant poo-poo. I hate it. I want to make my own. What tools can I use to make my own, all right? We have a lot, all right? And this is where we get into more advanced stuff, right? If you're a beginner who just wants to learn the game and you're listening to this stuff and you're like, oh, whatever, there is some stuff for you. I'll cover some stuff. The first thing I want to cover for beginners is that if you have any questions you want to improve specifically about fight routing, we have an entire document dedicated to the specific details of how a fight works. 
And that's the encounter document I have linked over here. Okay, this one tells you how the spawn conditions, how to progress the fight, everything like that. This is probably the most useful document that we have, period, by far. I, I regularly go to this to look for it, to look for little details to how to improve a fight. It's very important. If you really want to improve and understand a fight, um, this one's really nice. This one's really, really nice to use. I can't tell you how, how much, how, how really helpful this is. And we have every fight all the way down to the ancient gods. Yeah, so it's every 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 enemy that spawns the yeah. conditions to to clear the fight to get the combat rating yeah. uh, to spawn the new waves and even and fights so that aren't required fights that you yeah. can skip but under intended gameplay you can't skip like you know it's like you have to kill something and then a, a door opens but it's not tracked for example so this one's really important right um, really really helpful but again right unless you're really starting to try and improve and trying to learn not yeah really that and that document. Is really important, but it's not something you're going to learn. Like you can't sit yeah. down, read the paper, and learn and something. Just be clairvoyant about where to shoot the mangibus. That exactly. It, it, it gives you like specific details on like what you want to target, and it's use. It's like it's a tool. It's not you got to actually yeah. play the game, right? Okay. Now, now specifically for how to route, right? How to like things you can use to help you route, uh, route or to you know do other things, and that's this location document. Okay. So we have a bunch of legends, right? Like pretty similar to what I've seen. Like here's the fast travel spots, blah, blah, blah. All this other stuff, I'm not gonna get into details about it. But basically this just lists the locations of stuff and then you can adjust things. Let me give you an example. Let's go to say for example, Super Gorness, all right? This column here indicates Praetor tokens. So you can count them and say, at what point in this level do I have three extra Praetor tokens and then you know, I can upgrade here, I can't upgrade here based on what I have before, right? Well, I also include here mastery locations. So if you think, Drake, why aren't you upgrading, why aren't you mastering sticky bombs, right? Sticky bombs are great, blah, blah, blah. Great, you can do that. If you want to come up with a route, here, here I have, here's a column for all the stick, uh, uh, spiders you're going to find, the, all the arachnotrons, right? And you can come down and figure out a specific route, right? So this is for lock-on bursts, this is for full auto, all that information's there. What about BFG routing? Or you think ammo routing or something like that? Let's say, take for example, uh, Taras Nabad, right? BFG routing. This also shows where the BFG ammo is, right? In this column, right? Crucible routing, same thing. There's crucible routing there and even mastery routing. Like, let's say, when's the earliest I can uh, spend a mastery token? Well, here it is Atrium Plaza mastery token. Again, this is all very dense, right? You should use it as a tool to, to ask, you should ask questions and then refer to that tool in order to in order to use it. But those are the tools that are available and there's plenty more in the Discord. Uh, let me go back to the Discord. There's plenty more. Let's go back, let's go game knowledge. We have strout, strout documents. We have enemy damage values, like how much damage an enemy takes to a certain weapon, even by patch. Like if you're playing on latest patch, it might be different. We have that all documented here, right? Um, the encounter doc I mentioned earlier, we have a strat document, right? If you if you want to catch up on the latest strat, it's probably updated in here, right? Or if you want to learn a specific strat, right? Then it's there. The locations document I showed you, some miscellaneous knowledge, all that other stuff, right? Um, is there anything else I missed? Well, the, the, uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was going to say, the point, I did, is, uh... the point is, like, again, to reiterate, I mentioned this at the beginning. This is all if you want to continue learning and improving, right? This is the stuff that you'd reference if you want to like reroute or if you want to contest real work. It's available and this is how you navigate it. I'm not saying like if you're learning 100% now and you've never played an FBF before, the first thing you go is no, 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 no. Forget all this stuff. Don't even think about this stuff if you're just learning how to play this game. This is just me showing you that these are the resources that are available. And also the best resource is just to ask the question in the chat right yeah. here. Yeah. Right? Trump just ask a question. Hello. All right, that's the best resource if you have just a question or if you can't find anything there. But yeah, we have everything. We have setup, how to set up the game, how to block connection. We have down patches, everything you need. Everything's there, right? Okay, uh, I think that's it for me. I think I, I think I covered well, everything that I could. There are two things I think you didn't cover. The first one is um, the versions. You didn't talk about those. I, like on I, what I wanted to avoid that actually, Laurie. I might, I might disagree with you on this one, but. <laughs> I mean, okay, like I guess it, it's worth mentioning. For There are some tricks that you're going to see in the world record run, or excuse me, in Zai's run and the world record run 
that's out mm-hmm. right now that are not possible on newer versions. Um, if you play on console, uh, like Xbox and plays, we don't have any way to down patch, so you're just out of luck. If you're on PC and you play on the Bethesda version, we also don't know how to down patch. But if you're on Steam, you can down patch and you can you can actually perform these tricks. But we will mention, we will try to remember to mention which ones you can or cannot. There's, it's hard to keep up with all the things that they patch. Um, but for a beginner, it doesn't matter, honestly. It really, really doesn't matter. Like, No, um, I was going to mention version for that specific reason. Yeah. Because, because it, it, it really it's doesn't not... Matter. Yeah, I won't say it doesn't matter. There are a few things you can't and you can't do on specific versions. In particular, the... Uh... Oh, sorry. Down patching is extremely easy. Sorry, sorry go ahead. Could you uh, could you start the sentence again? I accidentally switched scenes without turning on the desktop music. Just, just start that sentence oh, again. Oh, yeah. no, I was in agreement with what you said, oh, okay, which okay. is essentially, if you just want to get a, a run-in, don't bother with down patching. You know, it, it'll save a bit of time, but your first 100% run, first of all, if you get a 100% UN run, congratulations, that's incredible. Yeah. Secondly, let's say you get in less than five hours, less than four hours. That, that's a very, very good run. That really it is. I'm saying, you know, I know world record is an hour, an hour 58, and you're like, twice as slow and, and it seems terrible but getting 100 percent, yeah it, it's it's very very difficult so down patching might save you i don't know a minute two minutes three minutes but on a four hour run who cares you know so it's not absolutely yeah. it's not going to change everything as i said down patching is extremely easy it's very simple but if you don't want to fiddle with your game files if you don't want to bother with down patching you can 100 percent run this category on current patch uh, and complete a hundred percent run UN uh, restricted category. Get there on the leaderboards. Get that ach- well that personal achievement done. Um, nothing's preventing you from doing that on the most recent version of the game. And it'll be fun. Yeah, it, it'll be fun. It, it's a it's a huge challenge. Honestly, it's a very difficult very difficult challenge. Yeah. So the second point is: Do you have any closing thoughts for 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 everyone? Yeah. Um... I do want to mention one thing that I think is uh, pretty important and I think is overlooked by a lot of people. I've heard this question a lot. How long do you think it'll take for me to get sub 230? Or how do I improve? How do I get as good as you would do? Right? You watch people like Zai or Zamai and they're like going at speeds ridiculous. What you, don't, what you miss is the thousands of times they've failed. Right? It's okay for you to like slowly improve. Zamai and Zai play the game many hours a day, right? They study and they practice and they do all these things. And it's okay if like, and if you look at that and say that's not unobtainable, that you can do that, but you also don't have to. If you don't want to be as fast as them, you don't have to be. Um, I don't want you to come in and say like, oh, I can never be as good as them or something. Of course you can, you can be as good. Do you want to be? Probably not. I remember watching Zaya try and go for that world record. He spent many, many hours a day. He died. It was There was a lot of frustrations with it, but like, don't like don't be discouraged by practice just have fun and if you want to improve you can ask and uh we'll present you with tools and things you can work on and stuff like that but try to try to have fun is the, is the main thing no i agree and as long as you have fun learning it is going to be a lot easier yeah grinding it I mean, there's nothing to do. There's no secret to, to getting an insane time. It's grinding. You just it's, you do the work. Yeah, yeah. That's all there is to it. If if you if you if you have that that desire to 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 get sub two hour thirds, sub two thirty or sub two hours or whatever, you're gonna have to work for it. If if that's what you want, it won't feel like work. Or all mm-hmm, in all, absolutely. you'll you'll be you'll be happy when you achieve it because as uh, Drake just said. It's going to be frustrating. It's a frustrating run when you're trying to get it mm. extremely fast because a simple mistake can ruin an hour and a half, two hours of work. Um, we'll get to the glory kills and stuff like that later on. But <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have fun with that one. Yeah, but uh, you know, if if uh, if what you want is just to complete the run, uh, you're gonna have so much fun. It's a great yeah. run, honestly. Yeah, it's a great. It's I would I would like. As much, as much as if you watch my stream and I get mad at some of the tiny little things that, that are in this game, they aren't 
they don't take away from the enjoyment to just playing the game casually. I would no, recommend I agree. this game playing casually. And as a speed game, I think it's a pretty excellent speed game. Oh, there's one thing we missed, Laura. We should ask the chat if there's anything we missed. And there's no, somebody that's a good in the point. chat who mentions BTW, why why Zai is run and not Zamites? Are there uh, routing differences? The, the key difference is um, Zaya doesn't talk during his run, so we won't have to... Since we're, be co we're going to be commenting the run, um, I didn't want a run where I'd be I'd be commenting over someone who's already talking to chat and, and mentioning what he's doing on screen or whatever uh, more than anything else. They're, I think you're, you're in a better position than I am to comment on, as to whether or not there are any routing differences. There has yeah, to be. Yeah, uh, I, think, but, I think I mentioned a few of them, but yeah. they aren't significant enough to warrant, yeah. like, to warrant changing, to warrant watching Zamai's run, for instance, if you're a beginner. Like, you can watch both of them. Like, it's, it's fine. Uh, I think somebody else, are you going to talk about the shield mastery when uh, the run arrives at Icon of Sin? Yes, that's correct. We're going to do that. Yeah, we'll get um, to that when we get to Icon Basically, all you need to know for routing purposes is that it's essentially free on time, and it's it's as if like you can you can ignore it even exists, basically. Yeah. Okay. Uh, chat, if you have any more questions, let us know. Um, we'll give some time for that. Um, anything else we missed, Laura? Anything else we could have missed? No, honestly, uh, I, I was I was uh, planning on getting this done like in in maybe twenty five thirty minutes. <laughs> it's been an hour fifteen, but yeah, I, I, I think I thought, a... I, was, I thought I was going pretty fast. I was like rushing things. I'm like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's a uh, there's a lot to talk about, and uh, uh, I, I'm glad we did this because uh, um, it, it's a it's useful to get this over overview of the run yes. before yeah. jumping in it. Um, even if it can seem a bit, let's say, boring and intimidating, uh, I know I know I wouldn't have the patience to to watch this full episode if I were learning this. Uh, I probably watch a few uh, other episodes, do a bit of the gameplay, and then come back to this. Mm -hmm. But it's it's useful. Um, and Drake has more than extensive knowledge of, uh, over the game, and he, he's unhealthy uh, amounts of knowledge. Unhealthy <laughs> amounts of knowledge. Uh, Yes, and he's responsible and he's participated in a huge amount in the community and in, in uh, preparing all of the documents you've seen. Um, so it's uh, it's great that you've, you're you the one who volunteered to do this uh, overview of the game. And as he said, you know, drop by the Discord, uh, feel free to ask questions. We know so much. I'm sure we know more than anyone at uh, ID about the game i, I can I, I, shots I can fired that. My man. <laughs> no it's not against them but you know someone did lore someone did coded something else another guy coded yeah. another thing we really have a very complete understanding of, of the way the game works but even with that there are still a few secrets the game holds in particular uh, fps and stuff like that and oh, we, we won't oh go too much about into that oh, and into talking it. about fps I, I will talk about quickly about every other movement tech we we mentioned in game. Uh, so uh, bunny hopping, dash boosting, um, meat hooking, and yeet hooking. Um, uh, Bloodshot has a tutorial for Ooh. NMG yes, that covers nice. that. Yeah, yeah. but uh, we won't go into that here. But he has like a 15, 20 minute tutorial that covers all of those. Um, and I think it's a great tutorial and they're not very complicated things. Um, but um, uh, you need to check out his tutorial if you want to. Uh, to um, yeah. Oh, cool. Chocolate's in the chat. And Chocolate's a, a great runner as well. He has a very really good time on leaderboards. Uh, he, he's in chat and he said he learned some things. So it's, it's cool to know. So to add some things onto that Bloodshot comment, his tutorial, um, the, end of, like, the, the rule set, he specifically covers tech that's applicable that we use in, in the rule set. So this tech can apply to 100%, it can apply to any percent, it can apply to ace. Um, so we highly recommend it. Even though he specifically is covering like how to do the any percent uh, NMG category and that specific route and that direction, a lot of the skills, most if not all the skills, pretty much apply. In fact, Zai, Zamai, I think almost every, I think both Zamai and Zai both ran NMG before they ran 100%. A lot of those skills carried over, very much so. So Yeah, yeah. of course. Okay. All right. Well, well I thanks think, so much. Oh, thank you. So doing. we'll be, I'll be joining uh, Zaya's stream for uh, Hell on Earth in a bit, uh, in a couple of minutes or five, yeah, ten minutes. Uh, I don't really know. Maddie, are you streaming all Raid you right now? Let me know.
if you're in chat. But yeah, carry on. Yeah, so that's it. So hopefully, um, not hopefully, but the plan is to go over his run. Uh, awesome. Uh, Zayel will start up his stream. Uh, okay. And uh, have him comment his run and uh, uh, get Hell on Earth done for tonight as well. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Um, I'm probably going to cut it here and then uh, we're going to raise Zai. Thanks so much, Drake. No problem, dude. And Pleasure. see you guys. Are